Are you looking at starting to film underwater, but just can't decide which camera would be the perfect match for you? Well, if that's the case, stick around, because in today's video, we'll look at different options of underwater video cameras. Coming up. Hi and welcome back to the Underwater Filmmaking School. My name is Matthias. Thank you very much for tuning in again. Have you felt overwhelmed at the sheer mass of choices when it comes to picking a camera for filming underwater? Well, let me tell you, you're not the only one. Pretty much everyone struggles when trying to decide what camera they should buy for filming underwater. Now this video today is meant to give you a general overview of the types of cameras that are available on the market right now and what you need to look out for to choose the perfect camera for your needs. Let's look at what we've got available on the market. So in today's video, we wanna talk about three different categories of cameras that you can use to film underwater. The first ones are action cameras. I would count GoPros in there, I would count DJI Osmo Actions, Paralens cameras, all that sort of stuff belongs into the action camera category for me. Now these cameras will typically cost you less than a thousand US dollars. Um, they will, most of them will be waterproof themselves to a certain depth, but you can also get a housing for them to take them deeper than normally the five or 10 meters that the normal housing is waterproof to. The second category are our point and shoot cameras. Now for me, I would put the Olympus TG6 into that category. I would also put the G series by Canon or the A6000 series by Sony into this category. These cameras will typically cost you somewhere between a thousand and three thousand dollars, also including an appropriate housing for them. Last but not least, we have our mirrorless or DSLR cameras, and as you can see, they come in a much larger footprint, really. Now, these cameras can cost you anywhere from two, three thousand up to 10, 12, even 15,000 US dollars, very much depending on what kind of housing you're deciding to go for. Regardless what camera system you're choosing, please keep in mind that the cost of the housing is gonna make quite a big portion of the complete, the total cost of your camera system for filming underwater. Not as much on the smaller ones, but as soon as you get into the larger mirrorless DSLR cameras, the housing will be quite expensive. Again, depending on what kind of housing you choose. If you're interested in learning more about different types of housings, pros and cons, please let me know down in the comment section below. We're not really gonna go too much into the housing topic on this video, because it would just take this video into a too long format. But if you're interested in learning more about housings, let me know down in the comment section and I'll make sure to produce a special video just about the topic of underwater housings. All right, so let's get into a little more depth about the different camera types and categories and have a look at the pros and cons of each of these camera categories. Let's start with the GoPro category or the action cam category, I'd better say. Now these cameras are typically very easy to use. They've got one button that you press that turns on the camera. They've got preset settings inside the system um, and they're nice, small and compact. The image quality that comes out of these cameras is actually not too shabby. You can do quite a lot with them and you can take them with you wherever you go. They fit perfectly into your BCD pocket. You can pull them out when you see something you wanna take a quick shot of and you can put them back again afterwards so you're not dragging a huge system with you throughout the entire dive. Moving up to the next category, our uh, point and shoot cameras. Now, these ones, the pros are definitely that you have a lot more options um, to set stuff manually in the menu of the camera. Now with the action cameras, most of the time you won't be able to set your white balance, you won't be able to uh, set the aperture, the shutter speed, all that sort of stuff. That's mostly with these cameras possible. So you can, you can, 
control the image that comes out of these cameras much, much better than what you can do with the action cameras. Also, these cameras can be modified. There is extra modules that you can put onto these cameras, like for example, wet lenses. You can put like a wide angle lens on here. You can use a macro lens. All that sort of stuff is widely available and will uh, just help you in get nicer, better images out of your camera and also will help you be more creative with it. The last one, our mirrorless and DSLR category, that's the king of the three, as you can just tell by the size as well. And even though if size doesn't matter all the time, in this point, it actually does matter because simply being a larger system, it will be a lot more stable than the other two camera systems underwater. Um, it might sound a bit weird to you, but it is actually desirable to have a larger system underwater because it's just going to be more stable um, even without image stabilization inside the camera. The good thing about this camera system is that you can um, dial in pretty much everything inside the menu. They're very versatile, you can use them in very different situations and scenarios. You can rig them up, you can use external monitors, you can uh, use different types of lenses, different ports and uh, you can just use them in a variety of different situations. The negative obviously is they do cost a lot more than the other cameras and the size, which is good for the stability underwater, is actually a pain on land. Carrying this uh, piece of equipment from a car to the dive site, onto a boat, or even traveling with a set like this can be quite difficult and painful. So this is definitely something that you need to keep in mind. So which of these camera categories is the right one for you? Well, if you're just starting out with filming underwater and you really just want to give it a go and see whether you like it or not, I would recommend getting an action camera. As we mentioned before, they're not very expensive, they're reasonably priced and you can just play around and uh, see whether or not filming underwater really is something for you. If you have a little more ambition, you want to start manipulating your image that comes out of your camera a little more, you want to have a little more creative freedom, I would recommend going for a point and shoot camera. Also, this is a great choice if you're not sure whether you want to go towards the mirrorless camera system, because with this one, you can start off with it now and you can upgrade as you go along and you can, um, basically the camera system can grow with your abilities, uh, which is really, really nice, I find. The mirrorless DSLR camera systems, I would only recommend that to you if you have already got experience filming underwater. If you don't have any experience filming underwater, this is probably gonna be an overkill and it's gonna be a task loading that is gonna be difficult for you. Um, especially if you don't really know the camera very well from shooting on land, taking it right underwater um, and shooting with it there is gonna be challenging to say the least. But if you have someone who's got experience shooting underwater and who wants to take the underwater imagery to the next level and produce really stunning underwater images, then definitely use the DSLR or mirrorless category. That's gonna give you the best possible results. And there you go. This is our little comparison of the different camera systems that are on the market and available for people who wanna start filming underwater. Deliberately, we didn't include the cinema system into our comparison today, obviously, because no beginner would start filming with a cinema camera underwater, at least I wouldn't. But if you're interested in learning more about cinema systems and how to film with them, what the possibilities are, what kind of imagery you can get out of them, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to come up with a video in the near future. And before we wrap up today's video, I've got an extra tip for you. I've got my five top features that every camera should have that you decide to take underwater for filming. First of all, you should make sure that your camera has in-body image stabilization. It's gonna make your life so much easier. Also, make sure that it records in 4K. Nowadays, in my opinion, that's a must. Good battery life is also gonna make your life much, much easier because you know, we can't exchange our batteries throughout the dive. 
If the menu system is easy accessible and the structure is easy to understand, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to find the proper settings underwater. And last but not least, the camera has underwater presets or the ability to manually white balance your camera, you're just gonna get much, much nicer imagery and much nicer colors out of your camera. So if you're on the lookout for a camera, make sure that these five key features are included in the camera that you pick for filming underwater and you're halfway there with getting stunning underwater imagery. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much guys for your time and for being here with us today. If this video was useful to you, if you've got something out of it, as always, please do hit that like button. You know it means a lot to me. And also consider subscribing to the channel so you're not missing on any future content that will be uploaded here. Also, don't forget to press that little notification bell so you do get notified whenever a new video is available. Thanks again for watching and now, happy shopping.